deep down, I think it's about power. It's about love. It's about destiny. Ambition to be higher than your status. An ambition to pull someone down lower than their status. Consequences, revenge, uh, sibling rivalry. It's a universal story. And it's one that's happened all over the world for generations and generations. It's a story that connects black, white, Asian, any culture. It's great working with um, a predominantly Yoruba cast. The key thing uh, that's unique about it is that we completely took it into pre-colonial uh, Yoruba land. We stripped out any colonial influence whatsoever. We uh, paid homage to Webster, but we completely decided to make it our own. The play is about two brothers and their sister. And basically, for some reason, to do with their own greed and their own feelings of selfishness, they don't want her to remarry. We forbid you to marry. This is a command. It is not idle words. We will not allow you to desecrate the royal name of Adebingle. They've decided that she should not marry, but they are not satisfied with her response that, yes, I agree, I will not marry. What they've then decided to do is, is hire themselves a spy. Well, my character um, is, uh, let's say, the uh, messenger for the brothers who have an agenda against their sister. I want you to become my ears and eyes in Yaludi's court. If she sneezes, I want to know about it. If she laughs or cries, I must be the first to know. I play Oluawu, who is a very powerful character and um, has done a lot of bad things. If I do not tell you, it is only to protect you. This secret will bust your ears and blind your eyes. It's great playing baddies. I play Oluye Ulurugu. I am the twin brother to Yellow D and I become extremely obsessive and incensed uh, when she goes and gets married against the wishes of her brothers. I turn my back on you now. As all heaven turns his back on you, I swear it. I will never see you again. She then decided that if my brothers cannot face the reality that I need to get married, she then decided to do this secretly. But not only is she doing it secretly, she decided to do it with somebody of a lesser class. My duties constrain uh, no. me. No, I will sleep in your chamber tonight. Beside me, my lord. First on one side, <laughs> and then the other. <laughs> Traditionally, it's a very bloody piece um, where um, things are achieved by killing other people. It is true that water douses fire, but let it turn into smoke and choke you. Um, and to, to make that work on stage for an audience, you, you, you have to kind of be very specific about what you're doing and how you do it. And they're using knives, so that, that all has to be safe. It has to look dangerous, but it has to be absolutely safe. The Yoruba language is a tonal language, very uh, musical language. And also, you cannot separate the language from the drumming. Um, the way the, the music has been put together with those elements uh, make it a very interesting and perhaps unique approach. There will always be drumming, there will always be singing, there will there, always be a sense of celebration and also grief. We don't, uh, we're not prosaic about it. If, if, if there's grief, we sing about it. If there's history, because we had a lot of oral history, that also is encoded in song. So music plays a huge part. Uh, as it were, in the, in, the, in the ability to encode our culture and our history and the ability to, to pass that on to, to, to others. Today we had the African Performance Symposium. Uh, we, we defined essentially what our terms were and determined essentially how we want to move things forward uh, as, as practitioners, as academics um, and as, as creatives. Having spoken to people, 
there's been quite a lot of talk about why is it that we have venues like West Yorkshire Playhouse and we don't have more of this type of theatre pieces in the venue like African performances or just plays by black writers and African writers and they've been having this debate and it's not going anywhere and um, every 30 years or so people reignite the debate again and I and I wanted to kind of reignite that debate just tagged on to the end of people coming to see a show like this. Um, so bringing people together today was a, a sense of looking at where we're coming from, looking at where we want to go, looking at some of the mistakes that might have been made, some of the successes and how those successes come about, and to build sustainable, uh, st to, to in, in, in put in place sustainable strategies to ensure that we're able to build work like this consistently and to leave a legacy for those, for the younger ones that, we're, that are coming behind. It's one of the most impressive pieces of stage, staging I've seen. I love the set, I love the performances, I love the music, the dance. Beautiful writing, yeah. tragic drama, blood, tears, yeah. laughter. The context, the language, the drumming, and just that feeling of home. It's something that I didn't think I would find in West Yorkshire, but I found it today, so it absolutely made me feel so proud to be Nigerian. First of all, it was just lovely to see an all-black cast. Um, that is one thing that will get people of my age, of my kind of background, into the community. Um, it was inspirational to see um, a positive tale through um, Africanness and blackness about what really inspired me. I thought it was awesome. Um, I've been coming here for a few years and it's really good to see something African. Uh, well, you don't normally like to see an adaptation done so like satisfyingly as this. Uh, I thought it was like a really well done like transition, a reimagining of the original Webster. There was times of happiness and sadness and that it's like it brought you into the play, like you felt you were part of it. I think one of the reasons why people should come and see the show is because it's a different culture, and but it's very accessible. So you don't have to know anything about Nigerian culture to get the story and to engage with the characters. Well, I think it's important to like reimagine a lot of the classics, especially when like breaking a lot of traditions. It's good to just see like very old like stuff in new eyes. In the original text, there's a lot of proverbs, which are sort of English proverbs at the time, and I really liked how those were like sort of changed to kind of like I think Nigerian proverbs. Yeah, they adapted so well. Yeah, it's, I think it's really important to see more like fame representation in the arts and it was really fantastic to see kind of such a cultural kind of mix of kind of a traditional English play and then like such a sort of like vibrant powerful interpretation of that into a different culture. I think it took me back home, it took me back to Nigeria, exactly where you can think about Tales of the Moonlight. The characters portrayed exactly Nigerian culture in Leeds today. To me that was a slice of paradise. I would definitely recommend this play for anyone to go and see. I can definitely say that they'd come away smiling like we have. I would see it again. I didn't want it to end basically, yeah. I didn't. 